Hi. Today we're going to talk about science fiction and fantasy as it relates to literature, movies, and television shows of the past. And we are going to make a paper pinwheel craft. Um, I have an example of it behind me here. Here's an example of what we'll be making today for our craft. This is our March 2021 online senior library program. And it is brought to you by the Tiffin Seneca Public Libraries Outreach and Extension Department. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with our first slide here. So do you have a favorite science fiction or fantasy book or series? If you do, please comment in the link below and let us know what your favorite book or series is. Mine happens to be Harry Potter. Uh, this, I love the whole series. My favorite book of the series is The Prisoner of Azkaban. We have this book available in the children's department, as well as many items, many different uh, movies. Uh, we have playaways as well, or audiobooks, uh, lots of adult books and children's, and especially YA books or, or young adult books as well that have the genre of fantasy or science fiction. So let's talk a little bit about the history of sci-fi and fantasy. Sci-fi and fantasy are genres concerned with the supernatural, fantastical, or other elements beyond our current technology. Sci-fi and fantasy were born in ancient times, but not fully developed until later. Some of these literary examples are the Epic of Gilgamesh, um, the Odyssey, Arabian Nights, and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Science fiction fantasy truly came into its own after the Industrial Revolution and really boomed in the 20th century. And this is because it was a time when science, technology, and society were changing so rapidly that many began to think that society might just collapse. Um, science fiction fantasy evolved as a powerful way to speculate about how technology would develop, how society would change, and how extraordinary events would affect us as humans. So some early influences for science fiction fantasy, that, those two genres, um, Sir Thomas More's book, Utopia. So he wrote Utopia in 1516, which was a forerunner of the utopian, utopian literary genre. So he was coined, he coined the, the phrase or the word utopia, and it's in reference to an ideal political system in which policies are govern, governed by reason. So Moore showed that poverty, crime, cruel punishments, and distinctions between classes are not in the order of nature, but our man's doing, and that man could equally create a just and happy social order as in the book Utopia. So this would continue to be the basis of many uh, science fiction works, that utopian theme, but this is where it kind of all started. Another early influence was Jonathan, Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travel. We have the DVD here at the library under the drama section. So Gulliver's Travels um, by Jonathan, Jonathan Swift was uh, published in 1726 during the Age of Reasoning. And uh, that was a time when there was lots of interest in scientific discovery. So this book influenced other authors for the creation of speculative fiction, or as we now know it, science fiction. Many science fiction works were based on travels to the moon or to space. Um, Gulliver's Travels is a classic English literature example. So in the story Gulliver, he travels to several remote nations of the world in four parts. And during his travels, he gets new perspective into his life. Another early influence for science fiction fantasy was um, Mary Wollstonecraft, I think I said her name right, uh, Shelley's book, Frankenstein. 
So one of the most important works that shaped modern science fiction genre was this 1818 novel, Frankenstein. The novel is uh, usually associated with horror or graphic lit uh, literature, or gothic literature that is, but many historians believe that um, it is the first real science fiction work because the central character, Victor Frankenstein, he attempts to create something that has life out of his scientific experiments. Another one of her works was Roger Godsworth, The Reanimated Englishman. And it is a story of a man who has been frozen for a long time and then comes back to life when the ice has been thawed. The story was based on real life newspaper report about a man involved in a cryogenic, a cryogenic hoax. So Shelley has influenced science fiction even up to today. So some recognition of science fiction as a literary genre. In the 20th century, science fiction became um, was beginning to be recognized and accepted as a literary genre. It started with pulp fiction magazines or pulp magazines that were immensely popular at the time. And an example of this kind of publication as Amazing Stories, you can see I have two little um, images here of the magazines. They were published by Hugo Grinsbeck, I think I said that right in 1926. So he coined the phrase scientification, or as we now know it, science fiction. So what is pulp fiction? We actually talked about this a little bit when we talked about mysteries and detective mysteries, but it is a term used uh, from the magazines and novels that were printed on cheap pulp paper, and they cost around a dime. In the early 1900s, huge amounts of creative writing were available to the American public. Pulp magazines and fiction ballooned in the 1930s and 40s. Detective and sci-fi were popular genres. Uh, World War II brought about paper rationing and increased paper prices. So pulp fiction was eventually replaced by paperbacks, comic books, television and movies. Some fantasy influences, um, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, written by C.S. Lewis, gave birth to the current wave of fantasy literature. The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings are hot, epic high fantasy novels written by J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, also, uh, R.K. Roland's uh, Harry Potter novels have become the best-selling book series of all time. Fantasy is becoming increasingly intertwined with mainstream fiction. So if you have a favorite uh, science fiction or fantasy movie that you would like to, to um, maybe leave a comment in the link below as to what your favorite one is, So science fiction made a big successful leap from paper to the big screen. The first film categorized as science fiction was Le Voyage das, dans la Lune, I believe is how you say it, 1902 by George Neelys. So this uh, science fiction film was the telling of a story of a spacecraft that, craft that was launched into uh, the moon and it was done so in a large cannon. The special effects used in the film paved the way for future sci-fi films and became a very popular after its release. So another pioneering sci-fi film uh, was, or movie was the German silent film, Metropolis, 1927 by Fritz Lang. Sci-fi for television, maybe some of these shows uh, Ring a Bell, something you watched as a kid or growing up. Uh, science fiction made another leap from movies to television around the 1950s. It was shows like uh, Rocky Jones, uh, Space Ranger, and Space Patrol, as well as Flash Gordon. 
So U.S. television has produced uh, Star Trek and its various spin-off shows of the Star Trek franchise, as well as Twilight Zone and The X-Files, among others. So uh, science fiction and fantasy in the 1930s and 40s. Films in the 1930s were influenced by the introduction of sound, dialogue, and the effects of the Great Depression. The decade saw a rise in film series, which were low budget. Um, these were called serials, uh, quickly produced short films that depicted futuristic uh, adventures filled with action and gadgetry. One of the first of these films was a Phantom Enterprise, or I'm sorry, Phantom Empire in 1935. It was about a cowboy who stumbles onto technologically advanced underground civilization. So they had ray guns, robots, and advanced televisions. Uh, more films throughout the decade continued to use elements like space travel and high-tech gadgets, as well as mad scientists. Uh, Disney created animations during this time with a combination of music and fantasy. Uh, some of the classics were Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, that was one of them, 1937. The Wizard of Oz came out as well, 1939, and it combined song and dance with a fairy-like narrative. Most, the, most of the successful sci-fi films in the 1930s ended up producing sequels in the 1940s. Uh, the war halted uh, the production of many films in the 1940s. So sci-fi and fantasy in the post-war years and 1950s, developments of the atomic bomb and anxiety about the apocalyptic effects of the nuclear war strongly influenced the sci-fi genre during the 1950s. So the Cold War and the communist era in the United States also led to an increase in sci-fi films, which later started a golden age of science fiction. So it was a time when many of the classic modern science fiction works were produced. One of the most important films during this time was A Destination Moon, 1950, which tells the story of a nuclear powered rocket that brings four men to the moon while competing against the Soviets. So this film was largely publicized and very successful, which resulted in better financing for more sci-fi films. And the decade also saw a rise in popularity for alien films as well. The Thing from Another World, 1951, uh, Godzilla, King of Monsters, that was produced in 1954, and The Blob, 1958, were all popular movies during this time. The success of sci-fi and fantasy during this decade influenced uh, future success and international growth as a genre for sci-fi and fantasy. So here are some pictures of some of those uh, movies that, and TV shows that we talked about here. Sci-fi fantasy in the 1960s and 70s. So Fahrenheit 451 was a one produced 1966, Fantastic Voyage 1966, and Planet of the Apes 1968 were three very popular films in the 1960s. One of the most significant sci-fi films during this decade was Stanley Kubrick's 2001 Space Odyssey. So uh, Space Odyssey was produced 1968. The film tells a story about a voyage to Jupiter with the computer HAL. And after discovering a dark machine that was destroying human evolution, uh, the film was considered to be groundbreaking for its time in regards to the quality of visual effects the realistic portrayal of space travel, and the legendary scope of its story. After this film was released, sci-fi films that followed would have larger budgets and improvements in special effects. 
There was much more uh, interest in sci-fi films with the space adventure theme in the 1970s due to the discoveries made in space during this decade. So some big successes were Star Wars 1977, Superman 1978, and Star Trek The Motion Picture 1979. There's a few pictures of some of those. Sci-fi and fantasy in the 1980s and 90s. Both Star Wars and Star Trek films uh, influenced escapism, becoming the dominant form of science fiction in the 1980s. The distinction between science fiction, fantasy, and superhero films became blurred. Uh, every year during this decade saw at least one major sci-fi or fantasy film release. The decade also saw a growth in an animation, which acted as a great medium for sci-fi film. This was mostly successful in Japan, where their anime started. So Steven Spielberg's uh, E.T. Extraterrestrial was made 1982. It was one of the most successful films of the decade. In the 1990s, uh, cyberpunk became popular. It was a subgenre of science fiction, and it basically had futuristic settings that uh, featured advanced technology. And the creation of the internet had a lot of influence as well on sci-fi. Um, one such film is The Matrix, 1999. There's some pictures of some of those movies. It's Back to the Future, we didn't mention that one, and Jurassic Park as well. So sci-fi and fantasy and 2000s. During this decade, films turned away from space travel and turned more towards fantasy themes. The blockbuster success of several film ad uh, adaptations of fantasy novels such as Lord of the Rings and The Lion and the Witch in the Wardrobe has helped further pop, uh, popularize the fantasy movies. The science fiction fantasy films has transformed over the past century and with the advancement of technology, special effects and backgrounds, modern science fiction and fantasy films look more realistic and believable than ever. Hi, that's all I have for you on science fiction and fantasy. I'm going to show you some examples of what we have at our library if you are interested in visiting our library and checking some of the materials out. Uh, we will go on to our craft next and we will be making these paper pinwheel uh, craft here. So the items you'll need for this are uh, sewing pins with colorful plastic pens. I have an example of some of these here on this little pin cushion. So um, if you have the, see here, the little colorful ends, that really helps out a lot. So some of those sewing pins. A wooden dowel rods or a maybe a new pencil with a nice eraser if you don't have dowel rods available. A lot of these things you can um, just use what you have around your house. You don't have to go out and buy anything special to make these pinwheels. Uh, decor decorative colored paper. So for these, you can see we use um, like floral paper on one side, it was kind of stripes and the other side floral. Um, but you can use any kind of paper. It can be any kind of uh, colored paper. It can be construction paper. We also will need glue or a glue stick, uh, paint, and maybe a sponge brush. This is an example of a sponge brush and uh, some paint as well. And that's optional if you wanted to paint your dowel rods. This one I painted like a mauve color. Or you can just leave it the wooden color if you'd like. Um, dowel rods look like this. I got some of these. And in a assortment. You can see they come in all different shapes and sizes for square, like those, some are round. So these are all wooden dowel rods. You can find them in the craft section of a store. And scissors as well, and then patterns. And I have provided some of the patterns that I use to make some of these um, in the links below. So you can uh, copy those, print those out, 
or maybe just kind of look at them, see what pattern you can get from them and try to freehand it on the paper. Uh, optional as well, a cute little vase to put them in, like they are flowers. You can uh, use that to decorate if you'd like, or you can just put them on the dowel rod, or you can even just make the flower pinwheel part of it and you know maybe put a magnet on the back, stick it on your refrigerator. So you can do really however you want to um, use these pinwheels. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here so I can show you some of the items available at our library. We have lots of exciting and fun sci-fi movies at the library. They're in the sci-fi section. And this one's the new Star Trek movie. So they made the old Star Trek movies, but then they came out with a new series. As well as... Then in black, we have ones like that. That's sci-fi. A drama, The Shape of Water. That's a fantasy movie. We have all of the Star Wars movies available at our library, as well as the new ones that have come out. And sometimes the fun ones like this. A lot of the family in the family movies, sometimes you'll find like Night at the Museum, something fun like that within the fantasy genre. Because we have a lot of great books. We have a lot of great books for kids, like Magic Treehouse series for younger readers. It's called for um, A Tale of Magic. We have you know, the Twilight series for YA. One of my favorite uh, books that I read. Uh, the Diverg Divergent series. Um, Veronica Roth wrote this. This is in the YA section here. It has a science fiction uh, label on the side. We also have the movies. So we have a lot of uh, sci-fi and fantasy available at the library. If you have any questions, just uh, ask at the information desk. They'll be happy to point out where these items are, are located on the stacks. So that's all I have for you today. And I just want to say thank you for joining us. And I hope you enjoy our craft. And I'll see you next month. Hi. Today we're going to uh, go ahead and get started on our outreach craft. And we are making these pinwheels here, these paper flower looking pinwheels. So this is our fun March craft that we're going to do. And it kind of reminds us of spring. Maybe the flowers aren't blooming quite yet, but um, gets us in the mood for spring. And the first thing you'll need to make these are, you'll need decorative paper. This is the kind of paper that I um, ended up purchasing, but you don't have to go out to a store and buy paper. You can use any colored paper at all. I did choose to do this kind of paper because it had it was two-sided and it had pretty flower patterns in the front and a different pattern on the back. And that's how most of these pages are. They have two-sided to the different decorations there. Then you'll need a pattern, and I've included these on the link for you to print out as you would like. Um, there's this pattern, and that one actually produced this one right here. We also have this pattern right here, which is the little bumpies on the edges. That one produced this pattern here. We have this pattern as well. And that one produced the smaller one, the mauve one. And our last pattern was this one. And I had to cut out six of those and attach them. That was actually the first pinwheel that I tried to make. So when you get your pinwheels finished, you can put them maybe in like a vase like this, or if you didn't want to attach them to like a dowel rod is what I have here, but um, you could also use a pencil and you could attach it even just with a push pin through the eraser of a pencil. It's one thing you could do, or you could just use a little 
uh, braid there like this and you can push it through and you don't have to attach it to anything. It could just be a pretty flower that you put on your refrigerator or you could put it somewhere else as a decoration. So you don't have to make a pinwheel that's functional and actually spins around, but if you would like to, I will show you how to do that. So our first step is, um, this is a different pattern I have here. This one right here. So we're gonna cut out that pattern. And then we're gonna place it on a piece of colored or decorative paper. And we're gonna cut it out. So I'm gonna do that. Pause it right here till I'm done. Okay, so I have taken my design, cut it out, and I put it on my paper here and I traced it either with a pencil or you can just hold it on and kind of freehand cut it out. And then you get your, you have to do that twice and you get your two patterns. So then you're going to take your patterns and you're going to take the tip here and you're going to fold it in. And you're going to do that to each flower here, fold that one in and then you're gonna fold this one in. And so when you get done, you get three petals of a flower. So you'll have to do the same for this one as well. You'll fold this in. And then you're gonna superimpose the two, one on top of the other, and it's gonna make this beautiful little flower pattern here. Now, uh, you wouldn't have to use glue if you didn't want to. You could just take your safety pin and push through those edges. But um, I am going to use a little bit of um, a glue stick and just use some glue to keep the edges down and to keep them firm. And then to glue the two on top of each other. So I'm going to do that next. Okay. So I have the two patterns here. I ended up uh, putting them one on top of the other, folding the inner ones first and then folding the outer ones just kind of on top of it here. So you can see the outside is black. I folded the outside up and over after I had folded the, the inner one. So here you get a nice flower pattern and it shows two different patterns. It's on the back side, it's the pink and the black and on the inside, it's the two different flower patterns. So your next step will be um, basically how you wanna attach it. Uh, you can use if you have a hole punch, you can use a hole punch and put a braid through it and you can just leave it like that. And this could be a little decoration that maybe you could put a magnet on the back and put it on your refrigerator. It could decorate somewhere around your windows or, or something like that in your room. Um, or you could just uh, do it the way I did to make a pinwheel. And so then you would need one of these little bobby pins, I guess is what you would call them. They're for sewing, they have the decorative top. So I'm gonna get one that kind of matches. I'm gonna use, I think a pink one here. And you will just poke it through in the center. And that's how it would be left. And it's little. Now you could also, um, there is a, a circle pattern that is included with the other one. If you wanted to make like a yellow fringe for like the, the little pollen part of the flower, you could do that. Um, you could do a different pattern. Like if you like this blue color, you can cut out a circle and put it on here for the center before you push your pin through. So that's really up to you. You could also use, if you wanted to decorate with some jewels, you could put some jewels in the center as well. So really, however you wanna do that. So your next step would be to attach it to the dowel rod. I have some different size dowel rods over here. And you can just leave it wood color if you would like. I chose to paint these here. Um, so if you wanted to have some like acrylic paint um, and you wanted to take like a little paint brush and just kind of brush on some color to make it a different color stem you can but as I said you don't have to and you can use different things like it's a lot easier to push this pin through an eraser and maybe you don't have dowel rods available at your house so you would just like to use a pencil you can do that and you might have to 
when you push these through, you might have to kind of mess around with it a little bit and maybe bend these leaves in so it doesn't hit when you go to spin them. But there is just using, using a pencil you can use or you can push it using the dowel rod. Just be careful because it is hard to get the, the pin into the wood. And um, you know, you can decide how you want to center it, if you want it right at the top or if you want it down a little bit. But once you push it in, it'll just go around like that and you'll be all set to go. And if you wanted to, you could add some decorative leaves. I didn't put any leaves on here, but you could put some leaves. You could do it the same color as maybe the back side of one of your flowers. You could do it green, like, a, like an actual stem. So whatever you wanted to do. And so this, there's really no right or wrong way to make these. Um, I'd love to see what kind of designs and what kind of flowers you ended up coming up with. So please attach your pictures to the post below and, and show us what you've created. Thanks and have a good day.